Alton Bailey, and I love to sew curves. I'm sure that's not something you hear every day, but it's truly my passion. Today I'm going to teach you about using curves in your quilt design. But before we get started, let's talk about the ways that you can design curves for your quilt. There's the old-fashioned way, which would be a notebook, a ruler, and a pencil. How easy is that? This is my first quilt that I designed before I even knew how to sew curves. And I love referring back to it and seeing my progress as I go. There's also online services that you can use for quilt designing, as well as software that you can buy. And I'll have all that information in my notes. So let's get started. The first thing that I want to show you is actually how to cut out a, cur cut out a curve. The first thing you need is a, a curved template and some fabric. And I love a 28 millimeter rotary cutter that it really helps me get along the curves. So I've got my mat. I'm just going to go along and cut. I'm going to turn my mat so I can cut the other side, turn my mat, and cut along the way. See how easy that was? We've got a great curve. Now, that's the convex one. Let's do the concave. And the way that you remember is concave, you crawl into a cave. So that will help you remember which is which. So here we're gonna cut. And again, this is where that 28 millimeter ruler comes in handy because we're going around that curve. And then we'll turn our mats and do our other two sides. Just like so. And now we have our concave piece. So let's sew it together. First, we want to finger press our centers like so. And you can mark it, you can um, use an iron to press it, do whatever works for you. All right, now we're going to glue baste. There are tons of ways to sew curves, but glue basting is my favorite. And as sewers, we find that we do strange things. And as I was uh, prepping for a class, I noticed that I mark my glue up at my center first, and then my edge. And then short strokes, so you don't pull the bias fabric around. Now I do one side at a time, because otherwise the fabric will stick. So you press down in the middle, you press down on the side, you come in here, and you get right in there, just like that. It's super simple. Let's do this other side here as we are doing short strokes. We've already got our middle basted, so now we're going to do our edge. And it comes together so simple, just like that. All right, let's go over to the machine. So we'll get our fabric in, we'll backstitch a little, and we'll move forward. And now that it's glue basted, I don't have to pull out any pins, so I can just pedal to the metal and go as fast as I want, which is fantastic. Voila, we've got a curve. It's as simple as that. All right, so now that we know how to sew curves, let's go ahead and see how we can use them in design blocks. Let's move some of this stuff. And over here I've got Curves, half square triangles, squares, and some background fabric. So I'm gonna pull a couple of my quarter circles, curves, and I'm just gonna lay them out here like this. And then I'm gonna add some squares. And don't get caught up on the color order. Just do what feels right. You can always move it later. The idea is just to play around and really get used to using different kinds of squares, different kinds of blocks in your quilt. Now, can you see what's emerging yet? We're almost there. This is such a fun block to use for someone you love because it's a cute little heart. There we go. 
had a little block mishap. There we go, cute little heart. Okay, now let's take and move our half square triangles in our background. And let's add some my squares. And we'll add a few quarter circles here and here and here. And then what we get is a nice cloud shape. So we're using a variety of blocks to get different shapes. Now let's move all of these. And if you notice, I have some here that have washi tape on them. And that's to help me remember where they go. It's a great tip to use when you're putting blocks together. So let's pull these out. We've got a super fun clamshell shape. We did two of them. We take two lighter ones to match and the two darker ones to match over here. We'll add our background color. And we've got a mythical Moroccan lantern inspired by trips to Morocco. There's so many things you can do with curves and other blocks. So now let's talk on a larger scale. Over here on the design wall, we've got a basic rope block. It's colorful, it's fun, it's really a beautiful quilt with a pop of color here. What, but what happens if we come over here and turn this block? Can you see a pattern starting to emerge now? Let's turn the rest. All right, so we've got that. One more left. And there we go. So now you can see we've got a circle in the middle and what could be considered a triangle all the way around. And the more you add, the better it gets and the more patterns that come out, which is super fun. All right, let's go ahead and try another one. So we've got our fun peach color over here and we're gonna put it up. Here. So we've got, one thing I like to do is when I'm using fabric, solid fabric, I like to use textured for my background. So this is a great linen that adds a lot of depth to the quilt. All right, so here you'll see that we've got a tulip emerging. We've got another design emerging here, and of course we've got our bold circles here in the middle. Let's see what happens when we add the next block. So here, we have another tulip. We've got this emerging here. And then to finish it up, we've got this. So now we have four tulips. We have this great flower in the middle. We also have this background design that emerges as well. And then we've got the border of the dark orange. Okay, so let's see what other designs we can make with this. Let's just twist it and see what happens. Let's twist this one to go here. And maybe twist this to go here. And now we have a multicolored tulip. We have a great multicolored flower right in here, which is super fun. Let's twist it again and see what we get. The idea is to really just play. Allow yourself to play with your quilts and change up your blocks into different designs. Now, here we have something that's all in solid. Let's see what happens when we look at the one in print. Right over here, we have a quilt that I made ages ago and it's been sitting in my work in progress bin and I pulled it out to show you this quilt is exactly like the orange one we were just looking at. 
It's in prints, though. So you really can play and let your individual style show. So when you're choosing prints for your quilt, I suggest you pick your favorite color first, and then go in and look at the scale of the print. With curves, it's better to use a smaller scale print so you really get more of the visual of it. So that's how easy it is to sew curves.